life. Smoking, it's the most preventable cause of death in the world. Yet in Asia, the number of people deciding to light up is on the rise. Health experts in Hong Kong say more and more youngsters are picking up the habit, and they believe tobacco advertising has a lot to do with it. The government agrees, and in line with the World Health Organization goal, it hopes to get rid of all tobacco ads by the year 2000. As we find out, the tobacco industry is fighting back, and hard. There are many countries in the world now, more than 30, that have complete and total advertising bans. It's not just the industry's ability to communicate. Um, it's also that the smoker is entitled to receive information about a product they choose to use. I don't want our next generation to really suffer from the effect of harm of cigarette smoking. They're slick, hard to miss, and they're everywhere. More than 100 brands of cigarettes are on the market. Companies want smokers and non-smokers alike to light up with their products, spending last year $147 million to promote their goods. But tobacco advertising has caught the eye of the government. To protect public health, it hopes to ban all forms of tobacco ads by the year 2000. Asia is certainly the target of, of really all the transnational tobacco companies and it's Asia that will take their profits into the next century for them and indeed they've said that themselves. Um, Philip Morris have said no discussion of the year 2000 would be complete without addressing the most important feature on the landscape. I am for a healthy population in Hong Kong. Now to me there's already enough evidence to show us that smoking is hazardous to health. Now, people will say that, look, we don't link 100% smoking to cancer of the lung, I agree. But there are lots of other conditions like lung diseases and heart diseases, which you know very well is related to smoking. Health experts say smoking claims the lives of several thousand people in Hong Kong every year. It's an issue the government is taking seriously. Tobacco advertising on television and radio and in cinemas were banned in 1982. Next month, the government will unveil its proposed smoking bill to the Executive Council. While sponsorship of sporting and cultural events is excluded, the bill calls for bans on direct and indirect ads in the print media and in outdoor promotions. Direct advertising is easy enough. That is the direct promotion of a tobacco product. Indirect advertising means a tobacco company or a tobacco distributor or a company which is owned or owns a tobacco company or a distributor. Using the tobacco product name, logo, imagery or theme or anything which reminds someone who's watching of the tobacco product. But how does the tobacco industry see it? The issue, it says, isn't about health but human rights. If they push this into law, then it would be in breach of the Bill of Rights. Robert Fletcher is chairman of the industry-backed Tobacco Institute. Since selling and smoking cigarettes aren't illegal, ads, he says, should stay up where they belong, in the public domain. It's also that the smoker is entitled to receive information about a product they choose to use. Um, the, the article, the particular Bill of Rights in Hong Kong is very specific. It's the right to receive and impart information. Um, why a smoker should be denied this, this information in order to make an informed choice, bearing in mind that smoking is perfectly legal. It will say this is not a health issue. They don't like talking about health because they've conceded health, they've lost on health. Everybody knows that smoking kills people. There's a limit uh, to which uh, uh, human right and freedom of expression uh, uh, works in terms of public health. Because after all, public health is to protect the health of the community for our young generation. Uh, so in other words, it's the responsibility of government as well as the community uh, to uh, introduce appropriate measures to protect the health of our next generation. The International Advertising Association says tobacco companies make up about 10% of the ad industry's clientele. It believes people should have the right to choose for themselves. By taking that advertising away, you're taking away from the consumer the freedom to choose the product that they actually want to use. 
Now, you could apply that to any um, category of advertising for any particular product. It's unfortunate that tobacco is the one that's at the top of everybody's mind at the moment. But the Bill of Rights is there to protect the individual, not the government. So in order to do that, the government has to demonstrate that the measures they're proposing will benefit public health. Um, and that, we believe, they'll be unable to do. The government is convinced ads prompt smoking, but it acknowledges it's hard to prove, with scientific tests not applicable to certain factors. And proof is apparently what counted for the industry overseas. Last September, the Canadian Supreme Court ruled by a narrow margin that an absolute ban on tobacco ads was unconstitutional. A few weeks ago, tobacco promotions hit Canadian streets again after being prohibited for six years. However, two companies had to have their ads taken down after they broke a voluntary code on advertising ethics. In spite of that voluntary agreement saying that they were not allowed to advertise near schools, up popped advertisements, I mean, right opposite school gates. And I think this shows very clearly that voluntary agreements simply do not work. They don't work in Canada, they don't work worldwide. It's being painted by the anti-smoking lobby as a deliberate attempt by the tobacco industry, uh, which really is uh, misrepresenting the situation. Uh, it, was, it was an honest mistake, it can happen anywhere. Anti-smoking lobbyists, though, say it's no accident companies are targeting youngsters. They maintain most smokers start before they're 25 years of age, and that children who do smoke light up with brands that are advertised the most. I mean, you can see a lot of advertising on uh, secret products, the macho image, the glamorous image of uh, the people who smoke. Uh, that would give a very wrong impression, especially to young people. Do you think advertisements actually have an impact on young people picking up the habit? I think so. With uh, things like Joe Camel and cartoons such as that, I think they really do uh, aim to get the younger kids. Yeah, we should not allow to make publicity for cigarettes. That's something we have in Italy. I don't think anybody really objectively can say that tobacco advertising in its current form in Hong Kong is appealing to that age group. Now, whatever people may like to think about smoking, it's a fact of life that some cowboys smoke, some people on the top of mountains smoke, some people sitting around a swimming pool smoke. There are real scenes where people could or would smoke. Just last week, the Council on Smoking and Health, or COSH, released a survey showing there is growing public support for the government's proposed ban. You will have seen recently that uh, RJR MacDonald uh, had a document which clearly stated that they had an interest in marketing to young people. Over half of the 1,100 Chinese-speaking respondents refused to buy the industry's argument. The moves breach freedom of speech. And roughly three-quarters felt ads encouraged the young to light up. The Tobacco Institute believes the results are nothing new and far from convincing. Now, it's wrong to assume that awareness leads to propensity to purchase. In other words, one thing doesn't lead to the other. Whether it's content or competition, diversification is the name of the game. And the rules vary depending where you are. Ten years ago, it was relatively easy to ban tobacco promotion. But what we've seen throughout Asia in the last ten years is a proliferation of other goods. In Norway, they won't let anything. Camel, for example, tried to market boots. And Norway said absolutely not. Singapore has done the same. We've had legal advice as well and stipulated that we believe that if they push this into law, then it would be in breach of the Bill of Rights. Um, it would be in breach of other agreements as well, actually, uh, which Hong Kong is bound to. The industry is unrepentant and has threatened to take the government to court. But after months of delay and redrafting of the bill, the government is confident it won't have to watch all of its work go up in smoke. Our legislative proposals, as presently drafted, are unlikely to be found by the courts to contravene the Bill of Rights. What they have now turned to fighting is on this issue of freedom and constitution. And they warn darkly in Hong Kong, you know, with 1997 coming up, you know, do away with one freedom, you know, the danger that there'll be a sort of somehow a domino effect, that all other freedoms will go one by one. It is the democracies that have taken the strongest stands against tobacco.
for now, the tobacco industry can breathe a sigh of relief, with the bill expected to be introduced to LegCo in May, and with sponsorship of sporting and cultural events left out for now. But if the smoking bill does become law, it'll likely mean both sides will be slugging it out inside and outside the courts. Welcome back to Inside Story. Earlier, we looked at the government's clampdown on tobacco ads. One area which is being left alone is the sponsorship of sporting and cultural events. We now take a look at what some believe is a viable alternative and why anti-smoking sentiments are forcing some companies to resort to innovative ways to get their message across. Whether it's watching action on the pitch or a world-class musical, sponsors are a major player in the field of sporting and cultural events in Hong Kong. Last year, tobacco companies underwrote nine major events, spending $28 million. It may sound like a small figure, but the returns are immeasurable. It's a business both sides on the advertising debate don't want to lose. For now, tobacco ads will continue to be able to take center stage. But the industry isn't applauding just yet. The government is saying that they're going to allow sponsorship, but from what's been presented to us, yes, we could sponsor, but we couldn't put any signs up. At the, at the event, and we certainly couldn't advertise it. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't strike me as sponsorship. Um, and as I say, I have to get back to the issue is that it's a very competitive business. We have to be able to communicate with consumers. It's a business, though, anti-smoking campaigners eventually want put to an end, only if the sponsorship vacuum is picked up by the government. I again would say that in 1988, which again is, what, eight years ago now, I proposed then to the Hong Kong government that they adopt a model that was pioneered in the state of Victoria in Australia. And that was so that sports and arts would not be disadvantaged by an advertising ban. And what, the, what they did there, and it's been followed by many states and countries since, and it's a real win-all situation, what they did was to put a 5% levy on tobacco. And they used that levy to specifically fund sports and arts and health education. And a survey released last week by the Council on Smoking and Health shows 70% of respondents give the plan a big thumbs up. The Hong Kong government is currently considering the move. However, whether it will act on it remains to be seen. The tobacco industry has already lobbied the administration to cut cigarette import duty in this year's budget to be announced this week. But if a 5% levy is put on the back burner, some believe there are other options. We hope that uh, in the end uh, there could be a kind of a foundation set up uh, to uh, help the uh, sports and cultural uh, organizations uh, to run their activities without relying on the need of uh, tobacco industry to sponsor their activities. It's even more than that because um, sports stars, for example, like Michael Chang, who has spoken out about for healthy living in Hong Kong, you know, don't take drugs. Does he ever speak out tobacco? The answer is no, because he comes and plays in the Marlborough and the Salem tennis tournaments here and indeed throughout Asia. And that is truly a really bad image that he's giving to young people in this region. So we need to free not just sports, but the sports stars as well. Meanwhile, as the sponsorship debate hots up, companies are using innovative means to get their message across. And we support their act of defiance against an increasingly hostile, uh, tobacco-hostile uh, environment. Dr. Horst Vetter is the managing director of Wind Film Productions International. He says messages aren't implied anymore. And as he tells Inside Story, this soon-to-be-released commercial for one tobacco brand may get more mileage with a new approach. It's called In Your Face. It is only reflecting a short-term enjoyment of life and uh, um, especially for the younger generation. This act of defiance also inclu includes the knowledge about the health risks, because in the TV commercial you can see easily uh, that uh, the guy is embracing the cross at a grave. Uh, therefore, this commercial doesn't carry anymore any implicit message. And since this commercial is uh, especially uh, appealing to the younger generation, I do think uh, it will have more positive as a negative effect by clearly pointing out those people who don't smoke will feel themselves confirmed 
when they see this kind of uh, uh, TV commercial, definitely. But again, that is not the group of people uh, our client want to uh, approach. The commercial, to be shown in German cinemas and in Eastern Europe, is the first of its kind. And perhaps another way of testing the limits of advertising is going online. Its business philosophy is motivated by challenge. For example, it diversified into mild seven lights. Surfing on the net, an endless wave of information and advertising, signifying a new frontier for tobacco companies and anti-smoking lobbyists. How or if governments will deal with this new source of advertising may be as uncertain as the limits of cyberspace. And it's unlikely to be a problem Hong Kong can unplug soon.